Hey, good evening, uh, good day, FM Walleye Classic Cup Tournament Anglers. I'm here with Eric Zeitz. Sorry. Uh, my name is Rick Mohan, and this is the rules meeting for the 2021 Big Pine Shootout. Say hi. Hey, everybody. So, as has become our tradition, um, we like to start this rules meeting with an invocation. Tournament anglers, we have had a long tradition of remembering and recognizing old friends and tournament competitors who are no longer with us. I would like to add to that tradition with a short invocation. Graciously, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have provided us. We thank you for your amazing creation and the opportunity to pursue our fishing tradition. We also thank you for the opportunity to conduct the 2021 Big Pine Summer Shootout Walleye Tournament and also uh, the improved public health challenges that we faced from the prior year. We also ask for your continued protection for our anglers and event staff. Please keep us safe as we travel to and from the tournament and as we are on the water. I take this time and a moment of silence to remember our old tournament friends and anglers whom we have called, you have called home to be with you. Amen. At this point, I would like to take a moment and um, recognize our tournament sponsors. Again, uh, this event could not happen without our tournament sponsors. And we want to prominently recognize um, Race Sport Marine, Lund Boats, uh, Mercury um, Motors, Shields, Vexus, uh, and JK Marine, TRS Industries, Kovash Marine, and Moorhead Marine, Eskimo, uh, Warrior Boats, Skeeter Boats, Striker Ice, Flag Island Resort, Onyx, um, Vision Bank and Chuck's Custom Rods. So guys, again, please take this uh, 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 opportunity to uh, remember the folks that have been supporting our tournament and patronize them, support them with your business. So uh, um, we wanna recognize those sponsors. So um, at this point then, uh, we've got just uh, some general comments and uh, I'm gonna flow through them pretty quickly and then uh, I'll have Eric talk about a couple of other topics. But so none of this is really new folks. Um, uh, in terms of general comments is that, you know, anglers must follow all of the COVID-19 executive order guidelines around um, social distancing in large groups. But, you know, fortunately that's much less uh, intrusive than they have been a year ago. We also require Coast Guard approved flotation devices must be worn when the boat is under power, which means on plane. Um, also check for AIS when launching and um, launching, loading and loading your boats. Uh, no alcohol is allowed on your boat during tournament hours. Uh, live and or, and or artificial baits are permitted or is permitted. Anglers must have a valid Minnesota fishing license. Anglers must follow all Minnesota fishing regulations. Um, there is a 20 yard spacing requirement between competitor boats. At no time may a competitor come alongside another competitor boat during tournament hours. Tournament patrol boats, sheriff patrol boats and DNR boats are permitted to come alongside a competitor boat. We will have patrol boats out there. Uh, you know, we have a sheriff's permit as well so that it's possible that you would be engaged by those folks and you please follow their direction. Cell phone or radio use among competitors is not, <laughs> is not permitted, sorry. Uh, we have allowed anglers to bring their cell phones on their boat for emergency use. Uh, we do reserve the right to inspect cell phones call logs uh, of competitors while on the water. Um, Anglers are permitted to call the tournament directors with questions or to request assistance. No fish are permitted on or in your live wells during 
the tournament. Please inform tournament staff if you see a floater or a dead fish. Uh, we will send a boat to recover that fish. Um, folks, you must use a judge branded ruler. I will show you that here in a little bit. Um, but that is the official tournament ruler for this tournament. Um, you will all, this is a catch photo release format tournament and you will need a camera that can accept an SD card. So please plan accordingly. Um, so Eric, talk to us a little bit about launching boats. Well, just to recap that real quick too, that's not the full list of rules. Everybody is responsible to read the rules on our website and Facebook page. Uh, go to our Facebook page uh, and click on tournaments or go to our website, fmwallets.com, and you can read the whole list of rules. That's just a snippet of what our rules are for the tournament. Right, so, and I hit the highlights and they're all published and um, you will be asked um, when you launch your boats by the boat inspectors, if you viewed this video, um, it's, a, it's incumbent upon you to know the rules. So. so for launching the general schedule for launching boats, inspection will begin at 6 a.m. on Sunday morning, 6 a.m for boat inspection, we will have somebody at both the east and west accesses. The east access is fairly small. There's not a lot of parking over there. So don't be alarmed if you are turned away from that launch after we get so many parking spots, they're gonna send you over to the west side because we're only gonna be shuttling people from the west access, okay? shuttles to the dog park will only be coming from the west access east access will not have a shuttle so once that access gets uh halfway filled up the inspector over there will turn you to the east access so please plan accordingly so i uh, just to point out eric that uh, you know dnr rules are that uh from a tournament perspective we should only occupy half of the ramp parking spots and the rest should remain open to the public Yep. The DNR requires that your live wells are to be empty and before launching. So there uh, have been county people checking boats before we launch in the past. We, our inspectors uh, will look at that too. If you pull up to the ramp with a live well full of water and a bunch of bait inside, it's against the law. Um, so make sure your live wells are empty before you launch. Um, the flight times. So you're going to be able to uh, start inspection at six o'clock. Rick and I will be at the end of the tournament dock, which is Big Pine Resort. So graciously allowed us to use their dock again. So Big Pine, Big Pine Lodge, excuse me, Big Pine Lodge at the end of the dock. Rick and I will be there also at 6 a.m. If there are any boats coming from water and you want to be inspected on the water, that's where you will come. You'll come directly to the tournament headquarters, which is the Big Pine Lodge dock. Rick and I will inspect you on the water. And that is permitted. That is permitted. And then the other teams, um, after you launch, you'll come over to the Big Pine Lodge and pick up your packets. We will be there again at starting at 6 a.m. We're gonna have two flights. Some people were upset last year that we had two flights. We're gonna do two flights again this year. Um, if you don't like that you're launching at 7.30, next year, send in your application earlier. First flight is released at 7 a.m. Second flight will be released at 7.30. The first flight returns at 3 p.m. And the second flight returns at 3.30. So each flight will have eight hours to fish. When you come back in, you are considered in if you are off plane and within 300 yards of view of the Big Pine Lodge dock at your designated return time. Much like last year, if you have fished it, and even those that are new, we prefer that you come from the north to the south and then take off straight east as you come by the dock when it's your turn to go. We'll line everybody up. We'll probably have the national anthem starts around 6.55 a.m. and then we'll start lining boats up. So we would prefer that you come from the north and then turn to the east when you get to the end of the dock to launch. We know there are people gonna be going north and south, so we want you to launch straight east from the dock. 
Um, so again, boat start and finish the day from the Big Pine Lodge dock. Um, remote parking, as we touched upon, will be available just west of the Perum Dog Park. Uh, there's a big grassy parking space over there that we're going to be uh, shuttling people back and forth. Um, construction, there is some construction on Highway 8 north of Big Pine, um, access to the east boat ramp. Uh, could be limited. So we suggest approaching from Highway 10 East out of Perm and come from the south. Uh, the if north you side there. The uh, east ramp. Yep, if you're going to use the east ramp. Uh, there is some constructions to the north. Um, I would say last year we did a pretty good job with the way we uh, moved, vehicle, or moved uh, vehicles back and forth from the dog park. Uh, the city's graciously allowed us to use this space. We're going to use it. Um, it's a relatively quick drive. We're going to have three different shuttles going back and forth. Um, the sooner you guys get there, the better. Um, really, that's about all I can say. I mean, we've got 60-some boats to launch. Uh, we did it at Pelican with no problem. I mean, we had everybody there. Um, everybody was back. Um, so especially if you're in the first flight, please make sure you're there. Uh, early enough, give yourselves enough time so you can get in the water and get your partner back. And actually it works out too that if you are um, shuttling, the guy that comes back from the shuttle will pick his packet up on the dock and get picked up at the same time. So it works out quite well. Uh, the award presentation will be at Big Pine Lodge approximately 5 p.m. after the tournament is, is finished. Uh, parking is tight, um, suggest carpooling from the dog park uh, the remote parking sp space that we have, if possible. Um, please take advantage of that. And Rick and I are going to do everything we can to make sure we can get these awards started around 5 o'clock. Big Pine Lodge is happy to host us. They're going to have extra people there to help out. Please come and join us. It should be a great event. Um, they've got a wonderful seating area where everybody will be able to sit and uh, look down upon the stage and see everything that's happening. Um, I look forward to a good uh, awards ceremony there. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Rick to review the packet for the tournament. So guys, um, you will be picking up a packet um, at the um, Big Pine Lodge beginning at six, but you have time till you get there. And so the packet is gonna contain, contain a sheet that has some basic information most importantly, there's phone numbers for Eric and I if you have questions or need to reach out. But it tells you about the flights and the timing and all of that. The other thing that's going to have is a Ziploc bag, and it will contain a um, card. This happens to be a card from two weeks ago at uh, Pelican, where you record the length of your fish. We're going to speak more about that later. There'll be a ribbon. This is not the color that will be available on Sunday, but we want you to tie that to the ruler. It'll also contain a pen and an SD card. This SD card has been formatted and it's blank. There's nothing on it. So that's how we maintain the integrity of the tournament. Um, we strongly encourage you to pick up that SD card and put it in your camera before we launch and take a hero shot, take a picture of the dock, take a picture of your partner to make sure it works. So if it doesn't work, roll back up on the dock. We've got more cards and we'll sort it out. But um, for the most part, that's not been an issue, but occasionally there is and we get it figured out. So take a picture and make sure it works. That's, that, that's key. And then um, as the other part is, is that it's important that you have a judge brand ruler. This is actually the version one. There is actually a version two that's a little longer, but they're both legitimate. Uh, and, but this is the official ruler of our tournament. Um, that's just how we standardize things. And, but either one of the, the newer ones are um, a little longer, but you know, they're the same in terms of uh, being able uh, standardized. The other part is, is that if you don't have a judge ruler, we have an inventory and we will have them available at the tournament. So 
Uh, if you need to purchase one, you can, um, we will have them available on Sunday morning early and you can purchase one. The price is 40 bucks. Um, and then you will be, uh, you'll have a great ruler and uh, you'll be able to um, participate in all these uh, tournaments um, in the future if, you know, hopefully you will. So, um, Eric, I think there's a couple of points that we want to talk about in terms of pictures that we've um, wanted to um, address before we launch into the fact that we're going to have a short video after this presentation here that Eric and I are doing that will go through the details of a catch photo release tournament. Yeah, just to touch on what Rick said there with the ruler. First thing, make sure you tie your ribbon onto the ruler. We need that ribbon in the picture with your fish. That tells us when that picture was taken, okay? Um, the next couple of slides we're gonna go through. Um, one, we're gonna show you good pictures. And then two slides are gonna be with bad pictures. The, the first slide of bad pictures, you're gonna see some actual pictures where a hand is covering the front of the fish so we can't see the bump, the bump board of the ruler. So if the head isn't touching the bump board, and we can't see that it's touching the bump board, it's a disqualification. Uh, we actually had a couple teams over our tournament two weeks ago that had that disqualification. The other picture is just what we call a washout. Um, remember, if the sun is out and it's bright, it's gonna make, put a reflection on that ruler and it's hard for us to see anything on the ruler. We might be able to see lines once in a while and we can count backwards if we can see the numbers, but if we can't see the numbers or we can't even see the lines, we're not going to take the time to look at it. We're going to disqualify the fish. Um, so take your time. And we time. hate doing that. We do hate doing it. It's not fun. Please take your time when you take your pictures. Um, same thing with dark, dark shadows. That can be a problem, too. If it's too dark, we can't see the ruler. So I, it's asking for perfectness, guys. I understand it, and it's really tough out there, and it can be challenging. But please do your best. And the other thing I would say is take as many pictures as you possibly can. I mean, there's plenty of space on these cards. You can take three or four pictures on the ruler if you have to. Um, and then at the end, make sure you take your, your picture releasing the fish or your trophy picture while you're holding the fish up. So that just tells us that's a break in between fish. The last slide, another bad pictures that we're going to go through is something that's really popped up in the last two years. If your hands are inside the mouth or inside the gill plates, at all fingers anything it's going to be disqualified um we didn't address this i guess at the beginning of the pelican tournament we're addressing it now so this is your warning if your fingers are inside the mouth touching the board if your fingers in here or your hands under the gill plate it's going to be disqualified um we're not going to do that stuff so both hands on top of the fish we need to see the head on the bump and the tail crossing the line at the end. We don't want just the tail picture. We got to have the whole fish in that picture. So if anybody has any questions, you know how to get a hold of us. Mouth can be open or closed. We don't care. You can pinch the tail. You can swipe the tail. Do whatever you need to do to make it whatever it is, but just make sure it's legible for us to see. Hey, well, guys, um, we're really excited about um, our second annual um, Big Pine Shootout. It was a great event last year. We're looking to be on track. Um, there's a lot of excitement. Um, we've had a few late calls, and we always try to make them happen uh, or allow people to participate, you know, if they give us a heads up, and we're going to continue to do that. But we have a field that's over 60 for sure, and uh, we're just really looking forward to a great event and uh, a great Father's Day weekend. Yeah, uh, pay attention at the next video here. It's going to show you how to score your fish as well. Kyle Agri and Brenton Hal here of FM Walleyes. We are your Little Pine and Devil's Lake Angler Young Angler Tournament Directors. We want to talk a little bit today about the catch record release format. Brenton, let's just talk a little bit about uh, leading up to the tournament and the day of the tournament, how we are prepared for that. So what you're gonna wanna bring with you on the day of the tournament is your red judge ruler. That is the ruler that we do use as the official ruler for our AYA events. Bring your judge ruler. We do have some available for you to borrow or rent during the events and we have some available uh, for purchase as well. Also, you're gonna wanna prepare for the event by having a camera that will 
put the pictures onto a standard size SD card, not a micro card, but we need that uh, a camera that will put the pictures onto a standard card. From there, the morning of the tournament, we're going to deliver a bag to you at the uh, launch, and that bag is going to have your SD card for that day. It's going to have your scorecard and a colored ribbon. Now you're going to need that colored ribbon to be in your picture, which Kyle's going to talk about in a minute, and you're going to use that SD cord to record your pictures uh, during that tournament day. And if you do want to do some practicing with our SD cards the night before at the rules meeting, we're going to have those available, Kyle, so that you can bring your cameras out, make sure they work on the cards, and, and, and plan and prepare for the next day. Yep, we want to be prepared the morning of the tournament. Once we get out on the water, um, hopefully we see our anglers catching a lot of fish, and that's, that's what we want to do. Um, the intention of this tournament and this tournament format is to get the fish landed and in the boat, to get them measured, recorded, and released as quickly as possible. So the process is going to look like this. Um, that walleye will first be taken out of the net and unhooked. We're going to lay that out on the judge ruler. We want a photo of one of the team members holding that fish on the judge ruler. Now it's important that we can see the nose of that fish touching the bump on the, the bottom end of the ruler and then also where we can see the tail in, in terms of getting an accurate measurement and verifying that measurement. Um, you can take as many photos as you would like. Once you get one you're satisfied with, then what we're going to do is we're going to take a hero shot. That indicates to us as tournament directors that we have the end of one fish and we can look for a new fish after that. Uh, a hero shot is simply a shot with uh, one of the team members, preferably one who caught the fish, uh, holding that fish. Uh, once we get the hero shot, we immediately release that fish into the water uh, and hopefully that process is, is done as quickly as we possibly can. Once the fish is released, then we go into our scorecard and we're going to write down the score, meaning the length of that fish, remembering that if the length touches a line, let's say it's 16 inch, 16 inch walleye, it touches a 16 inch line, we're going to record one quarter inch above. So if it touches 16 inches, we're going to record that fish as 16 and a quarter. And we record it on our card at that point in time and then we can go resume fishing. At the end of the day, you're going to have hopefully a full scorecard, Kyle, of all the fish that you had and uh, that you had enjoyed catching during the day. We need you to circle the amount of fish that we're weighing for that tournament. We need you to circle the ones you want us to weigh to, to factor into your weight for the day. Mm -hmm. And we need you to make sure that the angler's name who caught those fish is next to that measurement. Because remember, we do give out a special prize to the, the largest fish caught by a boy and the largest fish caught by a girl at our tournament. So we wanna make sure that we know who to celebrate with uh, those big catches for the day. And of course, if our adult angler catches one of the, the fish that we're going to weigh for that day, we still want that name on there too so that we can use it for our uh, results verification. It's a fun way to do a tournament. It lets us to uh, score all of the big fish we catch during the day, uh, really in avoiding our slot limit limitations if we were to bring the fish into the boat and, and bring them up to a scale. It's important to remember, Brenton, one of the things we want to make sure our teams are aware of is that at no time are we allowed to put a walleye into a live well, into our boat. Our, walleyes need, or our live wells need to be clean the entire day while we're out on the water. And as, as you are, are demonstrating, all of our participants need to be wearing their life preservers while they're out on the water participating in the AYA tournament. We wish everybody the best of luck. Look forward to seeing you there at the next AYA event.